the leader of the house. Thank you. I move that business in a order. before order of the day 11 government business be postponed until later hour of this day. The question is that the motion moved by the leader uh, by the deputy prime minister be agreed to. All of those of that opinion say. Uh, can I just put the motion and then I'll? Uh, I understand. I won't put the question. I understand you want to speak to it, but can I just? gather my thoughts of where we're at, because it's just been handed to me. The question is that the motion moved by the Deputy Prime Minister be agreed to. The member for Cook is seeking the call. Thank you. Madam Speaker, this motion before the House is once again seeking to change the order of the day to bring forward this government's shameful changes to skilled migration that are now to nothing more than attack on skilled migrants. Now, it would seem that the events of last night Madam Speaker, means that they may have changed the leader, but they haven't changed their policies. It's another Labor leader, and it's another policy failure that this, that this government is trying to force onto this parliament. Uh, this parliament, Madam Speaker, has sought to have this matter inquired into, and that has been frustrated by those on that side of the House. Uh, this parliament has been seeking to ensure that this government just doesn't ram more union-dominated um, agendas and legislation through this parliament. So the unions were running the Labor Party yesterday, Madam Speaker, and the unions are still running the Labor Party today because this bill, which, which the now Prime Minister expressed some months ago real concerns about, as many others did, it's now back on this agenda. Back on the agenda. The agenda of this government. The agenda of failure. The agenda of policy failures. This agenda this agenda continues under this Prime Minister because they can change their leader, but they can't change their spots. They can't change their connections to the union movement. The union movement is hardwired into this government. And one has to ask, one has to ponder what deal was done with the union movement last night when we know, when we know that the uh, member for Barabanong, also known by those on his side of the House as the Kingslayer, the member for Maribyrnong, the member for Maribyrnong, what deal was done with him uh, to ensure that this um, Prime Minister would be restored? This Prime Minister, the Prime Minister who has done last night what he himself decried being done to him three years ago and for the last three years has assiduously worked to get his revenge. But what has occurred here, Madam Speaker, what has occurred here is last night clearly there was a deal done and the union still want their pound of flesh from this Prime Minister, and the fact that this bill, that this bill that was listed on item 11, and the first thing, the first thing that this Prime Minister wants to do, the very first thing, this Prime Minister wants to put the union's legislation first on his docket. The first thing he wants to do in this place is to deal with this union-dominated bill, and it comes at the same time. It comes at the same time, Madam Speaker, that in the other place, in the other place, what has just occurred in that place is the government has voted against the restoration of temporary protection visas. Temporary protection visas. Now we all know, we all know, the government's total opposition, their total opposition to the Howard government border protection measures. And it would seem that this government under this Prime Minister is no different to the one uh, that this Prime Minister has succeeded under the former member for Layla, because they will continue to deny that under Prime Minister Rudd, now the restored Prime Minister Rudd, his decision to get rid of the proven measures of the Howard government, he stands by because the first thing they did in the Senate was to vote against temporary protection visas. The first thing they want to do in this House is to vote for the union-sponsored legislation to crack down on skilled migrants in this country. That's the agenda. Nothing changes. You can change the Labor leaders, but you cannot change their dedication and undying devotion to the union movement. Indeed, Mr Howes may well need to now sell his house, but this is a government this is a government that has sold out to the union movement more often than anyone in this place, I think, can care to nominate. What this bill is about, Madam Speaker, and the reason why the government wants to bring it on is because this government knows that it has failed on border protection like no other. And what this bill was designed to do under the guise of the former Prime Minister was to deflect attention, 
to deflect attention from their border failures, which are now, now to arrivals, illegal arrivals to Australia of over 45,000 people. And we will remember that when the Howard government left office, the average rate of arrivals illegally by boat was two per month. Two per month. The budget was $85 million a year. There were four people who were in detention who'd arrived illegally by boat. What has now occurred? Under this government, regardless of who the Prime Minister is, the budget is now next year purported to be $2,900 million a year. There are over 23,000 people who arrived illegally by boat who are in detention. And uh, we are now have arrivals of over 3,000 per month. That's the record. So I'm not surprised that this government would want to continue with the distraction. They would want to continue with the distraction of forcing of forcing on this parliament this legislation that seeks to hide their border failures. Now, I can also understand, I can also understand why they particularly want to do it with their new prime minister. The new prime minister started the boats. He can't be trusted to stop the boats. That's the issue with this prime minister. He started the boats. He can't stop them. And I, I imagine he will come in here with can all I sorts get the of new theories. For Cook all to sorts of new theories. The and the reason the motion before the chair. The, the reason why the coalition opposes this matter being brought on in Thank the manner in Cook. which it is being done, Madam Speaker, is because what the government is trying to do is hide and cover up and distract from the record of the new Prime Minister on border protection. That's what they want to do. They, that's what they want to do. The new Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister, I'm sure, will have lots of new thoughts and lots of new theories. Um, he may even, but don't hold your breath, he may even decide to apologise to the country, as he should, for removing the proven border protection measures of the Howard government. But the Australian people know that this Prime Minister doesn't believe in stronger border protection measures because they've seen his record. Because when he was given that opportunity in 2007, he chose to abolish stronger border protection measures and put them in place, much weaker measures. And we know that as the boats continue to arrive, one after the other after the other, um, the Prime Minister, as he was then, the Prime Minister would continue to make excuses. He went through a series of chronic failures chronic failures. It was this Prime Minister, under, under, when he was Prime Minister previously, that his Minister for Immigration gave permanent protection visas to those who blew up Civ 36. That was his record. It was this Prime Minister, it was this Prime Minister who instituted the asylum freeze that actually hardwired hardwired into the system the riots that later occurred under this Prime Minister. It was this Prime Minister whose bungling of the Oceanic Viking saga with his megaphone diplomacy had such uh, two significant impacts. The first one is it put out a clarion call to everybody around the world that the Labor government was a soft touch on boats. So get yourself to Indonesia because you can get yourself to Australia because that Prime Minister is a soft touch. But the other thing it did, a la what this Prime Minister's successor did in terms of the live cattle trade with Indonesia, this Prime Minister's approach to Indonesia was to embarrass, was to embarrass and to Shame. force force his ego on that Indonesian government, and we all know what the outcome of that is. So if indeed, Madam Speaker, if the Prime Minister is to go to Indonesia, if he is to go to Indonesia in a week or so, after he has apologised for the actions of his predecessor with regard to the live cattle trade, perhaps the Prime Minister should also apologise to the Indonesian government for his bungling and insulting way in which he handled uh, the uh, the crisis over the Oceanic Viking, a crisis that was completely self-made uh, by this Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, this bill, which is brought before this parliament, is seeking to do one thing, and that is to choke the 457 system that has been so important, a system that the now Treasurer, when as Minister for Immigration said, they had the balance right. They had the balance right. And I would have thought that with the change in the lineup, the change in the lineup that is a moving feast, as there are more vacancies sitting on that front bench today than we have seen in a very long time as they try and scramble together this chaotic and dysfunctional and divided government. Um, I would have thought that one of the things the Treasurer now uh, would like to have seen done 
uh, would be to honour what he had said when he was Minister for Immigration in his discussions with the new Prime Minister that this bill, this bill be discarded with. But that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. The first thing, the first thing this Prime Minister is doing is to seek to have this matter brought on for debate and decided here in this House. So as the Prime Minister goes around and as he goes into seats like banks or as he goes out into seats like Greenway or Parramatta or in Reed, as he moves around the country and he talks about his support for skilled migration, he should remind those who he's speaking to about his actions here on this day. Because this bill is an attack on skilled migrants, it's an attack on the skilled migration program, and the minister interjects, but the minister doesn't even understand the significance of this scheme. He, he, he doesn't seem to understand that the 457 program is, is, is the way in which skilled migrants are increasingly coming into this country and moving on to permanent residency. Now, the minister opposite has interjected in suggesting that the, somehow the coalition is, uh, is demonising skilled migrants here. Well, what we know about this government is, is they can't do anything about stopping people coming the wrong way, so now they're going to try and stop people coming the right way. But there will be a few exceptions. There's a few exceptions. There's, of course, the former minister, the former prime minister's media adviser. I mean, maybe he's got 29 days to find a new job. Maybe the new prime minister will take him on. Maybe he will. Otherwise, he's got 29 days. But this bill is seeking to extend that out to 90. Um, maybe um, the 457s will continue uh, to survive uh, for those who want to work in the union movement, in communications. The union movement seem to want to spend a lot more time on communicating the government's message rather than actually representing those uh, they're supposed to represent and their working conditions and their well-being in the workplace. This is a union movement which is completely uh, locked at the hip to this government. And anyone who thought the new Prime Minister was going to have a change of form when it came to the unions, or a change in form when it comes to doing deals with the unions and the factions they run here in this place is getting a very early lesson. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed when it comes to this government. They can change their leaders as often as they like, but they can't change the chaos that's happening on our borders. They can't change the dysfunction and division uh, that is occurring in their own ranks. Uh, they can't change uh, the team that they have on their front bench, which is very vacant at the moment. Uh, they can't change a team um, that can produce uh, the type of stability that we need. And we do need stability, Madam Speaker. This is a time when we do need stability. So a government that wants to chop and change the order of today's proceedings to try and ram through uh, this union-driven bill, I think is just a demonstration of the continuing division and dysfunction uh, that is evident in this government. There are two teams on offer here, uh, Madam Speaker. There are two teams on offer. There is the team that has worked together cooperatively on this side of the House now and for the last three to the four years. question before the chair. And I, I raise this point, Madam Speaker, about the stability of the teams. The I raise that point because this side of the House is prepared to deal with business as it was listed for today. And I, I refer to the daily program, Madam Speaker. Nowhere on this bill, nowhere on this daily notice, um, is even do, not, item number 11 even referred to. Nowhere at all. Nowhere at all. But it now makes its way off the notice paper, right down the order. I mean, I, I know that the batting order of this government on their front bench now has been completely depleted. But now they're reaching down the order of the notice paper to try and drag things up to pursue um, the continued agenda of the, of the previous Prime Minister and the continuing Minister for Immigration. I suspect that minister has a bit of explaining to do to the new Prime Minister, but I'll allow him to do that in his own time. Maybe uh, that minister uh, will be the same one who will continue uh, to babysit the border failures that he inherited from his predecessor, who is now Treasurer. Maybe that will continue to be his job. But that's the thing with this government. The uncertainty regarding the agenda today, the uncertainty uh, uh, reigning along the ranks of this government, where they don't know whether they're Arthur or Martha, whether they're in a job, whether they're out of job, or what they're doing, or what they're going to talk about. Uh, this is a government that has not only lost its way, it's lost the plot. 
It's completely and utterly lost to plot. They've lost control of their agenda. They've lost control of the borders. They've lost control of themselves. And that is on display. It's on display as the minister at the table, the now deputy prime minister, um, tries to interject and further interrupt this debate for one purpose, for one purpose, and that is to try and ensure that he can continue to throw his weight around this place, now, um, now wearing the deputy prime minister's title, and bring this matter before debate for this house today. This bill, Madam Speaker, this bill before that the government seeks to bring forward today, this bill is all about one thing, and that is continuing to pay off the unions for their support. The unions supported the last Prime Minister and whatever the deal they did with the member for Maribyrnong, the Kingslayer, last night, then they will honour that deal here in this place as they vote today, Madam the Speaker. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Um, the minister has sought the call on indulgence to clear up an issue. I am going to grant indulgence to the minister. Thank you. Uh, speaker, I rise to correct and apologise unreservedly for remarks I made last night at the Minerals Council of Australia official dinner held in the Great Hall. Acting on what I thought was reliable advice, I made the incorrect statement that the former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, had passed away. I wish to apologise for the error, and I have conveyed my apologies directly to the South African High Commissioner and to the Minerals Council of Australia. Thank, you. Thank the Minister. The Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Thank you. Speaker. Yep. The Deputy um, Prime Minister. <laughs> the, um, in terms of, uh, of, of this motion, um, the uh, member for Cook has just spoken for uh, 15 minutes on what is a standard procedural resolution that we deal with the legislation that was before the House last night when the Parliament adjourned. When the Parliament adjourned, we had had the full suite of speakers uh, from all sides of the House and the crossbenchers have already contributed to the, this debate. Indeed, one of the longest debates that we have had in the 43rd Parliament, whereby every member was given an opportunity to make a contribution. We then had a vote on the second reading. We then had, we then had uh, and we had that carried. We then had amendments moved by the government, and we had a debate about those government amendments, and they were carried. We then had a debate about amendments moved by the opposition, and they were lost. We even had uh, a debate on amendments moved by the member for Kennedy, and they were dealt with also by the parliament. The only sections of this bill that remain to be determined by this parliament is the third reading. That is all. That is to be determined. And in terms of the third reading of the uh, of the uh, uh, the bill, um, it became clear last night that the uh, member for Cook, in spite of the fact that commitments had been given by the opposition that they would facilitate the suspension of the house at the agreed time, the member for Cook chose himself to say that he had no regard for the agreements that had been stated and agreed to by the opposition. Now, from time to time in this place, agreements are made between the government and the opposition in order to facilitate arrangements. And they're done on the basis of common decency and honouring those agreements. This agreement was made last night, just as, just as uh, later, to, later this morning, when this is dealt with, the member for Line, who is waiting to give uh, his valedictory, will give it as part of a in response to a committee report which is not an unusual circumstance in which a valedictory speech is given. So this uh, proposition by the member for Cork is simply designed, uh, one, to uh, make the rest of the parliament and uh, the nation endure a 15-minute speech that didn't say anything at all, 
But secondly, to confirm, to confirm that, uh, that uh, in terms of agreements that are reached, uh, those opposite uh, want to essentially uh, facilitate a, a ridiculous uh, filibuster of this legislation. Everyone's had an opportunity to consider this legislation. There is no one who can argue this isn't bringing this isn't bringing something on. Well, you see, the notice paper. See, it's the black and white document. Some of the people opposite have never read a notice paper in their life, in their life, and the notice paper has the legislation on it. This has been dealt with, and I move. I move that the question be put. <coughs> the question is that the motion be agreed to. All of those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. no. I think the ayes have it. No. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. No. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, 
Lock the doors. The question is the motion be agreed to. The ayes are passed to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the tellers for the ayes, to appoint the members for Morton and McEwen, tellers for the ayes, and the members for Barker and Parks, tellers for the noes.
The result of the division is I 74, no 69. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The clerk. Don't you call it on? Oh, the, oh, oh, sorry. My apologies. Done with you. The question is that the motion to postpone orders of the day before. Um, sorry, I'll start again. The question was to bring this on. Now, the motion before the chair is that the business intervening before order of the day 11 government business be postponed until a later hour this day. All of those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. Think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bell for one minute. Lock the doors. The question is the motion be agreed to. The ayes are passed to the right of the chairs, the noes to the left. I appoint the tellers from the previous division. If anyone is changing their votes, could they please inform the tellers? Structured so that member for line has 17 minutes. The result of the division is ayes 74, noes 70. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The clerk. Order of the day number 11, Migration Amendment Temporary Sponsored Visas Bill 2013, further consideration in detail. The member for Cook is seeking the call. Item, item 
Madam Speaker. I move that so much of standing and session orders be suspended to allow the member for line to address the House to provide valedictory remarks about his service to this House. The member for Cook will resume his seat. I'm, I'm I know he's moved it, but I'm sort of loath to put the member for Lyon in this in this situation. If you want the honest, if you want the the honest truth, and I understand the intention of the member for Cook, but I am loath to use a member's valedictory in this way. But you have put the motion. The motion is the suspension. The leader of the the. Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Yes, thank you. I move that the previous uh, that the question be put. The member for Cook has moved. I I took the member for Cook. Uh, I, un I, I I had understood the member for Cook might have been seeking another option, and that is why I gave him the call. Um, the the member for Cook. Has the call. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, and, this, I, this I, and, I, put, and I will put that I had thought he had intended to move quickly to the member for Lyon, but uh, I have misread that. The member for Cook has the call. Madam Speaker, this motion is put forward reluctantly um, oh. because, as the Prime Minister, the as the Prime Minister said, what's your point of order? Cook, I'm speaking to the, the motion. member for Cook will resume, and the member for Dixon will not continue with that line. The Deputy Prime Minister has the call. No, you not. The Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Um, point of order. My point of order is this, Speaker, that the next business had been called on yeah. by you. There was an item already before the Chair, and I move that that question be put. The question before the, the clerk had called on the item of business. I had given the member for Cook the call as I thought he was going to propose something else. I did not think he would then eat into 10 minutes' time. I am going to put the question. The question is, in relation to the bill before us, that the bill as amended be agreed to. The suspension motion should relate to the motion before the chair. It does not. The member for Menzies is on a point of order. Madam, Madam Speaker, you have accepted a motion from the member. I have not. You have, you have accepted you that have motion. He started to speak to it. I have. So you can't. I have everybody not. in this place knows he has started to speak the to it. The member for Menzies will Speaker. resume his seat. I gave the member for Cook the call, as I thought he would be doing another. Yes, it does, actually. The member for McKellar, yes, it does. The suspension must relate to the matter before the chair. As it does not, I am calling on the business of the day. The question is that the bill as amended be agreed to. All of those that have opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The noes have it. Division required. They do. The noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
didn't consider. Lock the doors. The question is that the bill as amended be agreed to. The ayes will pass the right of the chair, the nose to the left. I appoint the members for Morton and McEwen as, McEwen as tellers for the ayes and the member for Barker and Parks tellers for the nose.
The result of the division is I 73, no 72. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The question now is that this bill as amended be agreed to. All of those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. Think the ayes have it? No. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bell for one minute. As this is a subsequent division, I appoint the same tellers and I remind people to remind, remain in their seats unless they are changing their votes and, if they are doing so, to report to the teller. Lock the doors. The question now is that the bill as amended be agreed to. Mm -hmm. 
Father. The result of the division is I 73, no 72. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. This bill, as amended, has been agreed to. The Deputy Prime Minister. I seek leave to move the third reading immediately. Is there any objection to leave being granted? Yeah, I then have to move it first. Is there any objection to leave being granted? <laughs> there being no objection, leave is granted. I, the Deputy Prime Minister. I move that this bill be now read a third time. The question is that this bill be now read a third time. The member for Cook has the call. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I don't wish to delay the House. <laughs> Order! My, Order! It was my intention earlier, Madam Speaker, to allow the member for Lyon to give that speech, and I look forward to that speech. And, but it is worth noting, Order. Madam Speaker, it is worth noting that as we move to this third reading, this is a Prime Minister that has failed this first test of decency in this parliament. This is a Prime Minister that has imposed the union agenda again on this parliament. Um, Madam Speaker, the amendments that I had circulated and tabled and wished to be considered in the third reading um, were important and went to particular issues in the bill. That opportunity uh, was denied by this, by this government, and that is regrettable. But with those statements, Madam Speaker, I'm happy for us to proceed. And I would note to the member for Lyon, who I've known for a very long time, I wish him and his family all the best. The question is that this bill be now read a third time. All of those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. No. I, no. Think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
the doors. The question is that this bill be now read a third time. The ayes will pass the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the members for Morton and McEwen as tellers for the ayes and the members for Barker and Parks tellers for the noes.
Nearly took their shoes off. The result of the division is ayes 73, no 72. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The clerk.